Contest starts the year on location at the boys' Bishop Montgomery Narbonne basketball game, plus highlights of the Battle of the Bay, who is best on the mat, north or west. And the Torrance Tartar boys' wrestling team take on Santa Monica in their league opener. There's a North Saxon soccer player you don't want to miss. Get fired up for the sports desk because it starts right now. <laughs> Desk fans, I'm Bonnie Prickett and welcome to the 2011 Sports Desk season. I am here with the song leaders from Bishop Montgomery High School. How are you? Good! They do it on cue and you'll see a few of their dance moves a little bit later. But first let's talk about one of their Bishop Montgomery boys basketball team members who has moves. All of their guys are good, but there's one guy, he's a sophomore, that won a slam dunk competition. His name is? Leon! Leon Jacobs was all the way up in Santa Maria, and we're going to show you his moves. As the Knights travel to Santa Maria to play in a basketball tournament, Leon Jacobs jammed in a slam dunk competition. That's right, not only did the crowd love it and the judges love it, so did his Knights teammates. Congratulations to Leon Jacobs for winning the slam dunk competition. And we cannot forget how good the girls' basketball team is here on the Knights' home court. We'll be sure and bring you some highlights of their games later on in the season. But let's go ahead and go to the mats now. It was the North Saxons taking on the West Warriors back in December. It was a big to-do. You might already know the results, but you will not see the highlights anywhere else but here on the Sports Desk. Sports Desk reporter Phil Stafford brings them to you. The 2010 Battle for the Bay was oh so much more than just a wrestling meet. A dancing laser light show, a live DJ, and a fog machine completed with a boisterous and rowdy crowd turned the second annual West vs. North High duel into a city spectacle. I think it's great for the city. It brings two different schools together, all kinds of community members. You see you know, all kinds of other high schools in the area watching. It's great wrestling, and like I said, we're trying to promote the sport and get people more involved, and I just think it's a great way to do that and bring the community together, and it's fun. And who wouldn't be inspired by the clash of two defending league champion teams? From the Bay League, the Warriors are looking to make it three league titles in a row this winter, and North is on its journey for their second consecutive Pioneer League crown. And much to the pleasure of the crowd, the action was hot right from the start. The Warriors found themselves with the 6-4 advantage through the first three matches. But next up for North was one of the top-ranked wrestlers in the state. And for Johnson Mai, his objective was clear-cut. I just needed to get the six points for our team to win. You know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't about winning. It was about, like, pinning them, right? So I just needed to go and win. Mai scrappled for the pin and the six points for North as they took their first lead in the meet. Then the Warriors responded with three more wins for a commanding seven-point lead, including Chris Lee's beatdown of the Saxons' prized underclassman Jordan Garola in a 7-2 decision. West, they came in here and they were focused, they were ready to go. Those boys are gamers, I, I, they, earned, they earned a lot of respect from me tonight. With three matches remaining in the meet and the Saxons trailing by two points, senior Nikolai Samochko stepped onto the mat. Coach Santos and the team watched anxiously as he pulled off a first round pin, making the next match a winner go home situation for West. To their advantage though, the Warriors sent up defending Bay League champion Matt Boson. His opponent was North senior Jeremiah Rockland. It's kind of coming out a little slow. I was pretty tired, but I had to win it. I had so much pressure and uh, I just did what I had to do. Despite the pressure and the toll of a three-period battle, Rockland conquered Boson with an 8-3 victory, securing North's title as best in the town. North has a great program, they're well coached, and to come in their gym and wrestle well and, and have a close duel like that, it's the confidence builder for us to move forward for CIF. As expected, the Saxons were relieved with the win, 
but they were also poised enough to realize there's plenty room for improvement. I'm disappointed in my team, you know? Like, we could have done a lot better. I gave Wes a lot of credit. Yeah, they were the better team tonight, but somehow everything fell, over, fell into our plate, you know? And it's worked out for us. I didn't see a lot of guts, to be honest. Um, I think they thought that West was just going to roll over for them. You know, we had a big crowd making a lot of noise. Um, I think the music got a hold of them, the environment got a hold of them, they lost focus. I mean, I think uh, we had a couple key performances, some bonus points that, that helped us win the duel, but I still feel like, you know, that they were just as good, if not the better team tonight. Coach Luke Santos told me in the preseason that this team had some unexpected talent that would make an impact this winter. Well, it didn't take long for that to happen, as seniors Jeremiah Rockland and Nikolai Samochko came up huge for the Saxons in their duel meet against West. Now with the Battle of the Bay crown in their trophy case, the Saxons look ahead to January for their first dual meet in league play. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Phil Stafford. And thanks out to Phil Stafford for that report. And thanks for a great entertaining piece from the North and West wrestling teams. Of course, North topped West by a team score of 36 to 23. And Matt Hall defeated Jameson Campbell. And, of course, Johnson Mai pinned Tony Lin. Masada Fukushima, expect nothing but the best from you. And Nikolai Simochko wins with a pin over Eric Tuesta. Jeremiah Rochlin defeated Matt Bozen as well. Coming up after this short break, you don't want to miss the highlights of the Torrance Tartars wrestling team. They've got more than just moves. Are you playing a dangerous game with the future of America's citrus? Move a citrus plant and you could be spreading a disease that kills citrus. On its own, the disease can't move far, but in a car, an infected plant can travel miles. Move a citrus plant and it could be game over for our citrus. Now it's your turn. Please don't risk citrus. Don't move citrus. Learn more at SaveOurCitrus.org. A message from the USDA. Obviously, here at Bishop Montgomery, you got coaches and players, and now I ran into outstanding coach for the night, Ed Hodgkiss. How are you? How was your holiday? It was great. You know, I really enjoyed the break, and uh, it's good to get back out here and be my first basketball season with the school, and I'm excited about our prospects. That's pretty good because football has not been king. Basketball has, and now you've brought prominence back to the program. What is that like knowing? Is there a different feeling in school? Obviously, you weren't here last year, but talk to me about what kids now think of B-Money football. Well, I, I think kids are excited about it. You know, they're walking around with their heads up. We've always had great basketball teams. Those kids um, always have their heads up, and uh, we're happy to get the football players walking through the hall with their chests out and heads up, and um, it, it's been great. Uh, the students are excited about it, and uh, hopefully it carries over in this basketball season and the next season for football. So, before we jump into prospects for next season, you mentioned some guys have already verbally committed to a few schools. Can you let us in on maybe who's going where? Um, you know, one of our defense ends, Christian Holloway's uh, verbal to um, SMU, so we're real happy about that, and uh, I think it's a great fit for him. He's a great player for us. He's a great all-area team here in the South Bay, and I think he'll do a great job down there, and we're real proud of him. So nobody else you can talk to about us yet, or no, no one else yet. We want to really uh, mention, but uh, you know, Chris Trish and I think is pretty set at SMU, so we can definitely put him out there. You promised me on camera right now that when your next star player is ready to verbally commit or sign, you'll let the sports desk know. You guys will get the breaking news. There's no doubt. You heard that here. Edge Hodgkiss will let us know. So. Give us a little sneak peek into next year. You lost a lot of seniors this year. High school boys grow from 15 to 16. They can grow two or three inches. What are your prospects? Well, you know, that, that's what I was saying earlier was, uh, you know, we have a lot of young kids, and it's my first year doing it to see kids at this age really grow and mature. Um, hopefully there's a maturation process, but we're happy with our juniors, and it's their time starting this week to uh, get in a weight room and become leaders. So we're happy to see where that goes. Um, we're excited about it, but right now we're focused on just getting them bigger and stronger. Bigger and stronger. You know, wrestling's a sport that you can get bigger and stronger, and the Knights don't have a wrestling team, which is a bit of shame because coaches might actually like that, right, being a football coach? Oh, we love it. You know, I, I love those wrestlers. I was coaching at other schools that had wrestling. We'd love to 
maybe bring it back here to Bishop, but um, it's a great sport for football players, no doubt about it. It is, and that actually signifies the end of the game, but let's go ahead and start looking at the Torrance Tartar wrestling match against Santa Monica High. Gazal Hassan was there, and he brings it to you. Winter season underway here at Torrance High School. The Torrance Tartar wrestling team about to take the mat against Santa Monica. See what they can do to improve on last year's second place finish. They'll shoot for the top spot here in 2011. We go to the mat in a matchup pulled from the pages of your history book. The Vikings of the Norse era take on the Tartars from the Mongolian dynasty. CJ Pistano and Andrew Ortega take the first two matches for Torrance by decision, and we jump to the 119 pound matchup featuring Kode Miyamoto doing business for Torrance High. Miyamoto in the maroon trunks records the pinfall at 138 of the first period for the Tartars, giving them a commanding lead. Daniel Leva up next at 125 pounds, not wanting to be outdone in his match, he records the pinfall with just 10 seconds remaining in the first period, giving the Tartars a 19 to nothing lead. Not a bad day at the office for Tartar coach Shea Kending, watching his wrestlers sweep the first four weight classes. Santa Monica took the 130 weight class to get their first points in the match, and then coach Kendig went to his bench for Nathan Cruz. Nathan Cruz, he's normally a 130 pounder. We bumped him up to 35s because we had a couple people out and stuff like that. And he went in up against uh, Gianni Forster and uh, ended up getting the pin for us, which was completely unexpected. That was one of the matches I expected, you know, to not come out with the victory and for him to, you know, dominate Forster from start to finish and get the pin was, was real surprising. Carter's now up 25-3. Next up, Eric Carrillo, last year's Daily Breeze All-Area Selection at 140 pounds. Moving in towards his opponent on the mat. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a takedown. We go into the second period of the match. Here's Carrillo with the flip. He's locked in, 30 seconds remaining in the second period. Look at the pain on his opponent's face. He's cinched in, leaning forward. Carrillo, the black mamba with the newly dyed black hair. There's the pinfall. Carter's up 31-3. Nathan Kang, late substitution for the Tartars at 145. Tight match in the early going for Kang, but he falls behind 4-1, trying to battle back. We jump to the second period here as Kang picks up a couple of points and then goes for the takedown. Third period, waiting seconds. Kang clinging to a slim lead here. Can he hold on? The referee says yes. Nathan Kang pulls off unlikely 5-4 win and puts the Tartars up 37-3. Stake to the big lead, the Tartars would not look back in taking the match. Coach Kendig attributed the win to his team's superior condition. You guys don't have the best technique, but we are definitely in shape, and I think it showed it today. Uh, what we lacked in technique, we made up for in conditioning and you know wore all those guys out where you know, once we got to the third period, the technique didn't really matter anymore. You know, our, our conditioning took, took factor, and, and we came up with a lot of victories that I don't think we should have won. We also had the chance to chat with senior standout Eric Carrillo about some of his expectations for the upcoming 2011 season. This year, it's going to be a lot better. I'm trying a lot harder at practices, on runs, I'm doing my own thing after practices, and, you know, it's just how hard I try and how, how bad I want it. It's just it's all in the mind. And, the more, I, the more I want, the more I need, the more I keep going for it. Torrance Tartars start off the wrestling season with a 44-16 win over Santa Monica High. The Tartars dominated this one. They took 10 of 14 matches, including five by pinfall. They start the Pioneer League season undefeated 1-0. Reporting for the Sports Desk, Ghazal Hassan. Thanks out to Ghazal Hassan for that report. Torrance overwhelmingly beat their league opponent, Santa Monica, 44-16 and five of them were by pinfall. Congratulations. Let's look at another wrestling score. You got South beating Beverly Hills 50 to 22. It's a sure answer. You have no other question about what city has the best wrestlers. Co Oliviato, Paul Song, and AJ Mashadi help the Spartans to their win by pinning their opponent. And we now go from the mat to the pitch. Let's go out to North High, where new sports desk reporter John Ramey breaks down the girls' soccer team.
Hi, Bonnie, and hello to everyone. This is John Ramey welcoming you to a new season of winter soccer coverage here on City Cable 3. Beverly Hills High School, the opponent for North, they are 8-3-1 on the season. Meanwhile, North, under head coach Katrina Johnson, comes into the match at 5-8-1 on the year, and they're fresh off a second-place finish at the Harbor Cup Tournament. Let's go on out to the game action. Nil, nil, first half, couple of early chances for North. Natalie Medina down the center of the pitch, but a dubious offside call, and that was that. Later in the scoreless first half, Sarah Richardson, a good corner effort, but Beverly Hills turns it away. Tremendous match in goal for Katie O'Malley, the North senior. A great save here. Her play impressed coach Katrina Johnson. Um, we've been working really hard with her and uh, actually coming out and uh, the, the good thing that we have about her is that she actually uses her feet a lot. She's not afraid to come out and step up and step forward so she had a lot of great saves for us today. Scoreless with under two minutes remaining in the first half. Tremendous team defense by North. O'Malley knocks it down then Mariah Mayo clears it off the line and North preserves the nil-nil tie to the intermission. In the second half, Beverly Hills breaks through in the 63rd minute. Sydney Seagull makes it one nothing. North would answer immediately though with junior Natalie Medina scoring the equalizer. That set the stage for Jessica Can with under three minutes to go in the match. The game winner for North, two on the final score. Uh, I usually am not the main forward up there. Natalie's usually there helping me out and she definitely helped me out up there. I was happy but I wanted to keep going strong and not let up. We've had quite a few injuries actually and uh, moved up a player from JV to play with us the last couple of weeks and uh, just uh, luckily that we have some strong subs on the sideline that we were able to get in the game. I think uh, this shows that North High is definitely a team to, to look out for. So the North goal scored by Natalie Medina and Jessica Can, and a fine performance in goal by Katie O'Malley. North with a 2-1 victory over Beverly Hills. And with the win, they're now 6-8-1 on the season. For the Sports Desk, this is John Ramey. And thanks out to John Ramey for that report. North topped Beverly Hills 2-1 with Natalie Medina and Jessica Can scoring the winning goal for the Lady Saxons. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other soccer scores. South beat El Segundo with Jessica Naki and Kaylin Probing scoring the second half goals for the Lady Spartans. They are now 9-3-4 overall. And the Lady Warriors fell to Santa Monica with a score of 3-2. They begin league play this week. Let's now go ahead and take a quick look at prep boys soccer. You got West and Torrance with a 2-2 draw. Julian Salmon and Spencer Shorten scored two goals for West, but a big play Coming out of the Tartars, you got Benji Piva and Rajiv Garola scoring the equalizer for Torrance in their tie against West. And you have South with a 1-1 tie, Ryan Nolan scoring that goal for the Spartans. And we'll go ahead and take a look at North tying Redondo, and it was Sean Nagano scoring the goal for the Saxons. They are now 4-4-5 overall. Bishop Montgomery, they just can't seem to get it going. They lost to Culver City 1-0. Coming up after the short break, you'll want to check out the good and new changes over at the West Girls Basketball Court. Stay tuned. Can you tell? Can you tell? Does it look like I'm fighting a disease? Fighting. Fighting. Fighting for my life. Like my life expectancy is shorter than yours? There's no outward sign. But we're battling every day. Every day. Every day. Worrying. Testing. Treating. Fighting. Fighting. Diabetes. Diabetes has been called a silent epidemic. It's time to call it out for what it is. This is Brett Michaels. Join us. Choose to share, act, learn, and give. Help us stop diabetes. And of course, look who I ran into other than one of the stars of the girls basketball team here, Bishop Montgomery, Devin Brookshire. Happy New Year. How was your break? Um, well, it wasn't much of a break, but um, I think that our turn we did well in the tournaments and um, looking forward to starting leagues on Tuesday. So. so you start league this week. What do you think the, the turnout's going to be for your first couple games? Are you guys going to take what you learned maybe over some of the losses over the holidays, or are you already passed that and you're looking forward? 
Um, I think that we've learned with every um, game, and we're trying to learn from both winning and losing, so you don't have to take a loss to learn a lesson, and uh, I think that we're ready for league, and uh, we're going to be pumped up for it. Nothing else but pumped up here, because basketball is king, although your football team did pretty well, yeah. and so is your boys' basketball team. They look like they're going to be back in prominence. In regards to your season, what is your record so far, and what is your goal? Are you a, a game by game or week by week? What's your what's your new thought? Um, well, we're twelve and four right now. Uh, that uh, we suffered some early losses that we probably shouldn't have lost, but I thought that we learned our lesson from them, and we're just looking. We're taking it game by game, but you know we're looking to get a league title and CIF, and from there on. So um, we have some lofty goals for this season, but I think that um, they're achievable, and we can definitely they're within our reach for sure. Hey, that sounds like a perfect answer to me. That also leads us to the final girls basketball preview, the West Warrior girls basketball team. They have a new coach. You might recognize him. Caparasso went over from South, is now at West. And they're looking forward to taking on the Bay League. Let's go ahead and take a look. The Lady Warriors have a new look this season as a lot's changed for the team since last year's 11 and 17 showing that left them at the near bottom of the Bay League. This year's team already has 11 wins tallied and step onto the hardwood with a new coach and a new strategy. Bill, this year's a lot better than last year. Things are going a little more smoothly and the team seems to be a little more together than it was last year. Everything's coming together faster and we're just performing like a team better. One of the most significant changes for the Lady Warriors is their new head coach, Michael Caparoso, who believes he knows exactly how to maximize his squad's performance. I try to keep it fun. I want them to have fun and, and uh, a preach intensity. I, I like the kids to be accountable with each other as a team. And I think they play hard when they're playing for each other. And once they understand that, um, they get more out of the kids. Coach Caparoso's philosophy is already making a positive impact on the team. It's aggressive and it's, you know, like he wants you to win. We all want to win and it just feel like it's more of a, he packs more of a punch so that we can get the job done faster and efficiently and just kind of have fun on the court rather than, you know, all about winning and everything. Yeah, he's a very competitive coach and um, he wants to win as bad as we do, so that always helps. On the court, the Warriors are led by seniors Kelsey Ishido and Aaron O'Malley. They tell us what to expect this season. I think we have a lot of height this year, as well as a lot of guards. Um, even though we have, we're kind of a young team, we still have a lot of skilled guards that have been playing for a really long time. So I think that's our strength. And we have a couple shooters, too, from the outside. I also think uh, our team is a lot more voted, motivated this year, and we work hard. Uh, all the time, we never give up. Something else to expect is a strong Warrior defense. The team's focus on defensive accountability is already paying off as they recently held El Segundo to only 27 points in a 58-27 victory. With a solid start to the season, West feels well prepared as Bay League play approaches. I think we're a fun team to watch. Uh, we get after it, we try to run. Um, we try to put up a lot of points. I think we're averaging, um, I think we're averaging 48 points a game, um, so that's pretty good. And as the team continues to improve, they have confidence and high hopes for the rest of their season. We don't usually do well in the Bay League, but I feel like now we're going to be a huge surprise. I think. Yeah, I think we're going to be a huge surprise. Yeah. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Karen Bright. And thanks to Karen Bright for that breakdown. The West Girls basketball team is definitely on a better trip this season. Their last two games, they have won convincingly over South, 62-36. to And their record is now 11-5 with a huge win over El Segundo. Their key returners, Kelsey Ishigo, Aaron, and Kelly O'Malley. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the other scores from around the city. With the nice big win over Palos Verdes, Bishop Montgomery brings their record to 13 and 4 in this game. Devon Brookshire had a double-double and Taylor Sansbury brought 14 points and 6 assists. 
We see Torrance trying, but they couldn't beat Eisenhower in a non-league game, losing 47-42. to But Jana Tamita of the Tartars had 16 points. And we'll take a look at a few more scores. This girl is good. Jocelyn Barnes, you don't want to miss her. She helped the Saxons win over Peninsula 48-46. to And Lady Saxon Alyssa Nishi needs to be watched as well. In another game, the Spartans toppled El Segundo 42-22. Lady Spartans Christian Ishii and Kayla Campbell had a big hand in that win over El Segundo. Let's now check out a few of the highlights in the Bishop Montgomery and Narbonne boys basketball game. The Knights hosting the Gachos out of Narbonne High. First half, they executed their offense well, led by senior guard Tyler Harvey. They would go into halftime down one point, 34 to 33. The Gachos had a different game plan for the second half, and in the third quarter, outscored the Knights on a 10 to two run. The Knights attempted a few comebacks, but couldn't keep up defensively, and the Gauchos would end up winning 70 to 55. This loss is surely to get them ready for league play that begins this week. And the Knights might have fallen to Narbonne 70 to 55, but they're nine and six. They're playing huge rival Sarah, and we will have those highlights for you next week. Let's go ahead and take a look had a pretty nice win that the North Saxons had over Redondo. Darren Hetchinova scored the game-winning basket with only seconds left to bring the Saxons 66 over 64 points scored by Redondo. But a big shout-out goes to Devontae Jenkins for a good game. And Elliot Morris, your player to watch, 19 points, 16 rebounds, and three blocked shots. South fell to Downey 47-42. They will begin league play this week. And now is that time of the show where you let us know something we might not know already. Call us at 310-618-5762. You can always find me at thesportsdesk at torrentca.gov. You can see every show from the Sports Desk for the last several years at torrentca.gov. And the 2010 shows are on YouTube. And as they're turning the lights off here on the Bishop Montgomery Knights home court, that means we're done for the show. We've got a lot coming your way this new year. Don't forget, if you have any ideas, be sure and let us know. But until next time, Torrance, have a good time and happy new year.